Good day grade 10s. In this lesson we're going to be teaching you about trig functions. The first trig function we're going to get to is the sine graph. Now I know you guys have learned about sine because I did the videos for it. Okay, but now we're actually going to learn how to graph the sine function. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to do it very basically. We're going to be we're going to be plotting some points. So we're basically going to put in the degrees from naught through to 360, north through to 360 degrees, and we're going to find the y value for each of these values. And then we're going to plot it on this graph and we're going to look at the shape, and then we're going to discuss things like the amplitude, the range, and the period. So the first thing I need to do is get out a pen so I can write things down, and the second thing I need is a calculator. So let's do this, okay? So I'm actually just going to make my life a little bit easier and lock the taskbar so it doesn't go away every time and that way I can get to keep my calculator all the time. So let's have a look at it. Do you see we've got naught degrees here? Now most importantly you guys need to make sure that your calculator is in degrees because if you do it and it's got an R at the top or a G at the top it is not going to work. You need to make sure that it is degrees. So let me show you that I've already put mine in degrees. I go shift menu and there you see angle is in degrees. Okay now you will see either a capital D over here somewhere. If you're seeing a capital R it's wrong. If you're seeing a capital G it's wrong. It has to be a capital D for degrees. Right and it's going to be as simple as this. We're just going to plug in the numbers. So we're going to go sine 0 equals 0 and then we're going to fill in over here 0. Oh dear, that didn't work. Okay then. Sine 30 is going to be 0 0.5. So I'm going to fill in here 0 0.5. And then we're going to go to sine 45. And you're going to get 0 0.71. 0 0.71. Now I can already hear the groans from here. Do we really have to do this every time we plot a graph? No. This is just giving us our shape of our graph. So we're going to do baby steps. We're going to plot this nice and gently with little degrees of change and then we're going to see the shape and after that you'll be able to draw it very easily and we'll notice certain points. Okay, but let's do this first. So sine of 60. Sine of 60 is 0 0.87. 0 0.87. Then we've got sine of 90 and sine of 90 is 1 okay then we've got sine of 120 so we've got sine of 120 and that is 0 0.877 again so it's 0 0.87 again so do you see that there's a shape happening here let's have a look at sine of 135 so sine of 135 I'm moving the car calculator over to that side now. So we've got sine of 135 is 0 0.71. Ah, 0 0.71. So do you see, what do you think sine of 180 is going to be? Let's have a look. Sine of 180. So sine of 180 equals 0. Awesome. Okay, so that equals 0. Now let's do the second row. Sine of 210. So if we're going to take this across to the side so we can see what we're doing. So we've got sine of 210 and it becomes minus 0 0.5. So that's minus 0 0.5. Then we've got sine of 225 is going to be minus 0 0.71. Minus 0 0.71. Sine of 240 is minus 0 0.87 minus 0 0.87 sine of 270 is going to be minus 1 minus 1 sine of 300 gives us minus 0 0.87 minus 0.87 then we've got sine of 315 is minus 0.71 
that becomes minus 0 0.71 and then we've got 330 so we've got sine of 330 which becomes minus 0 0.5 and then finally sine of 360 sine of 360 which gives you naught naught okay so that gives us naught so now if we plot this what we're going to do is to make this a little bit easier for us to see is we're actually going to use the whole of what's available for y so you'll see that the biggest y value we've got is y and the smallest y value we've got is minus one so it's going to be one up here and minus one up here down here so then obviously this is going to be 0 0.5 that would be there is minus 0 0.5 then there you're going to have 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 and that's going to be negative 0 0.25 and negative 0 0.75 so let's plot our points so 0 is 0 okay right that's 0 if that's 90 and we've got 3 then this has to be 30 that is to be 60 that's 90 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, and 360. Right, so now let's plot. So that's naught. At 30, we're at 0 0.5. At 45, we're not going to plot because we don't have it, but we're going to plot 60. At 60, we're at 0. Point. That's about 0.87 at 90 we're at 1 at 120 we back at 0.87 at 180 we back to 0 okay so do you see we've got a shape that kind of looks like it's doing that now let's look at the next bit 210 goes to minus 0.5 240 goes to minus 8.7 270 is minus 1 300 is minus 330 is minus 0 0.5 and 360 is 0 so therefore that there oh it's a terrible drawing I'm sorry please make sure you draw a smoother drawing than that that there is our sign graph a basic sign graph the amplitude is the maximum distance from the y axis, I mean from the x axis. So basically it's your height of the graph, whether it be positive or negative. So the amplitude for this is 1. Our range, however, the range is the total y that the graph is splitting through. So what is it going up to? It's going up to 1 and it's coming down to minus 1. So if we had to draw it, I mean with using set notation it's going to be minus 1 1 included and our period the period is basically the number of degrees for one complete you could say revolution or you could say wave revolution or wave or what we usually call it is a cycle a cycle so what would happen if we went to I don't know 390 if we went to 390 let's just get our calculator and see what happens if we went to 390 we've got sine 390 it goes to 0 0.5 so what does that mean that means that at 390 this graph would carry on going up so this year is one complete cycle and you will see it stretches from 0 to 360. So your period is actually effectively the same as the domain in the sense that it looks at the value of the degrees, the horizontal degrees, and it takes to complete one full cycle. And in this case it would be including 0 to 360. Okay, that's not the domain, that's the period. I'm just saying it's like the domain. So the period is 0 to 360. And no, you don't have to 
plot every single point now because there are some significant points here and I'm going to just change the colors so I can mark off the significant points. If you have the basic sine curve, the basic sine curve like that, which is y is equal to sine theta, you are always going to go through 0, 0. It's going to be 90, 1, 180, 0, 270, negative 1, and 360 and 0. Okay, so those are our basic points which we are always going to go through. So if you know the shape of a sine curve and you can plot it, then no problems. You don't actually have to go through all these points. Right, let's see what happens if we mess with the equation. Let's see what happens, and you'll notice now I'm only doing significant points. So we're going y is equal to 2 sine theta y is equal to 2 sine theta. So let's just think about, if we go back, do you see that we've got y equals sine theta, we've got 0, 90, 180, 270 and 360. And do you see those values were 0, 1, 0, minus 1 and 0. Okay, so if I had to plot the y equals sine theta onto this, just to show you what's going to happen, let's just make one year for a bit. And then this would be minus 1. That would be 90, 180, 270, and back to 360. So it would look a neater version of this. But that's what it looked like. Now let's see what happens if we multiply the value by a 2. So I'm going to change my colors so that we know what we're talking about. So we get y is equal to 2 sine theta. So what are we really doing? We're taking whatever the y value was before and we're multiplying it by 2. But just to prove it to you, I'm going to put it in the calculator. So up comes the calculator. And this time we're going to go 2 times sine 0, which is 0. Okay, so we're happy with that. That is 0 stays because 2 times 0 is 0. Let's look at sine of 90. So we're going to go 2 times sine 90, and that is 2, okay? So then that is 2. So now if we look at 180, 180 was 0. So we think, we could predict that 2 times 0 is going to give us 0. But let's check it. Let's use our calculator. So we're going to go 2 times sine of 180. And what do we get? We get naught again. So we were right. And then obviously, if this is 2 times whatever sine theta was, and sine of 270 was minus 1, this is going to give us minus 2. You can check it on your calculator. And then this goes back to 0. So what is the 2 doing? Let's have a look. Let's plot this. So there we go. 0, 0, 92, 180, 270, minus 2. I'm back to 360 and I'm just going to put minus 1 here and minus 2 and then I'm going to join my dots. An important thing about this is this graph is not supposed to look super pointy. If you're looking, drawing something, oh, if you're drawing something that looks like it's got shark's teeth and I'll show you what I mean in a minute, then you're drawing it wrong. If it looks like that. That is not a sign graph, okay? It has to be more curvy. Guys, again, I apologize for that. You must remember that I am drawing on a awkward, a very awkward um, digital pad, whereas you guys are going to be drawing with pencil on paper and you'll have an eraser. So therefore, it'll be no excuse for you to make a beautiful, nice graph. So there, so what has happened? Do you see the amplitude has doubled? Before, it used to be just to 1 and now it's to 2. So the amplitude is just 2. The range is obviously also increased. Now it's going from minus 2 to 2. But do you see there's been no effect on the period? The period is still from 0 to 360. It still takes 360 degrees to get through a full cycle. So what does this number in the front do? The number in the front basically changes the amplitude the amplitude. Right, let's see what else we can do. y is equal to minus sine theta. Okay, so again, just to remind you what it looks like, y is equal to sine theta, 
I'm going to quickly draw in why they've got the sine theta. We've got 90, 180, 270, 360. I'm just going to join the dots. Oh, that looks very pointy. I'm sorry. And that looks a bit better. Okay, and this is 1, 2, minus 1, and minus 2. Now, what do you suspect the minus is going to do? Because what do we do? We know that, for example, at sine of 90, we have 1. But now we're timesing it by minus. So do you think that maybe this is timesing everything by a negative? So what I mean by that is that instead of it being a positive y, it's going to end up being a negative y. But let's test it on our calculator. So we're going to say negative sine of 0 is going to be 0, which we kind of expected because 0 times 0 is nothing and a minus 1 times 0 is 0. But let's look at the 90. So we're going to go minus sine of 90 and we end up with minus 1, which is kind of what we suspected because what are we doing? We're going y is equal to minus 1 times sine theta. That's what we're really doing. Okay, 180 is just going to be 0. And then before, 270 used to be minus 1. It used to be minus 1. Now, it's going to be minus times the minus 1. So let's just pop it in our calculator. Check. So we're going to go negative sine of 270. And it equals 1. Excellent. So that equals 1 and that equals 0. So now just to make sure that you can differentiate between the two graphs, I'm going to change the color. So we're going to be drawing this here, these points here, this graph in red. So again, we've got 0, 0. But this time when x is 90, y is minus 1. That goes down to 0 as normal. And when 270, x is 270, or theta is 270, y is 1, and we go there. So do you see that we were right? All that it's done is flipped the axes. So it's flipped the graph. So we've got a mirror image of the graph. So what's happened to the amplitude? Do you agree the amplitude hasn't changed? It's still the maximum distance that this graph ever gets away from the x-axis is one unit. So the amplitude is still one. The range, the range is still the minimum number comes to is minus 1 and the maximum number it goes to is plus 1. So the range is still minus 1 plus 1. And the period, the graph still stretches over 360 degrees. So do you see that that hasn't made a difference either? So it is still from 0 to 360. So the only thing this does a negative will swap across the x-axis. Um, so it will swap across the x-axis. Okay, it will flip it. Right, let's see what else. Now we've got y is equal to sine theta plus 1. And again, what I'm going to do is just draw what we would normally have. Actually, let me just start off. I'm just thinking about what we might get in the future. So let's start off with, and we'll do it in blue. Let's make this 1 and that minus 1. So we're going to have a very shallow graph today. This, this, that, and back to 360. And we're just going to join, join the dots. OK, I apologize for the bad drawing. Now that there is just your y equals sine theta that you should recognize or start to recognize now. Now we've got y is equal to sine theta plus 1. y is equal to sine theta plus 1. So now instead of using a calculator, we're going to use our graph. Okay. So do we agree that sine theta, when theta equals 0, is 0? So if we plus 1, it's going to be 0 plus 1, which is 1. At 90 degrees, sine of 90 degrees is 1, and if we add 1, we get 2. At 180 degrees, sine theta is 0, but now we're adding 1, so it becomes plus 1. At 270, sine theta is minus 1, minus 1 plus 1 is 0. And at 360, sine of 360 is 0, and 0 plus 1 
is 1. Okay, you can put this in your calculator to check that I'm right, but I am. So what I want you to do is start realizing that you can, because what the ideal thing is to do is to be able to know in the exams, when you look at something like this, let me quickly draw a basic sign graph and then see how it's been, been manipulated. And that's what I'm trying to show you how to do now. So what does it say? When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 90, y is 2. When x is 180 or theta is 180, y is 1, going down to 270 and up to 1. So what have we done? We've obviously moved this graph up by 1. But we should have expected that simply because we have done so many graphs. So we go y is equal to ax squared plus q. With that, move the graph up. y is equal to a over x plus q. With that, move the graph up or down. So obviously, this plus or minus is basically shifting, shifting your graph. Okay, it's just shifting the graph. In this case, because it is positive, it is shifting it up. Now let's look at the amplitude. The amplitude is going to actually be, I know we said it's from the zero line, but the amplitude is actually the distance from the line of no deviation. So again, your amplitude is just one. Okay, but the range has changed. Do you agree that it is stretching all the way up to two, but it goes down to zero? So even though the size of the range hasn't changed, it is moved. So now it goes from 0 to 2. And luckily again, the period has not changed. It's done one full cycle in 360 degrees. So we've got 0, 360. Okay, so that's not so bad here. Right, so therefore our standard form is y is equal to a sine theta plus q, where a is your amplitude. The greater your amplitude, the greater the peak and trough, the distance. And if it's a very small amplitude, it's going to be a very shallow graph. Okay? Q shifts the graph. If it's a positive, it's going to shift the graph up. And if it's negative, it's going to shift the graph down. So, grade tens, that is it for the sign graph. Not too bad, hey? Please make sure you understand and have learnt the standard form of the sign graph, what the shifts do, and then you can draw all of the different types of manipulations that we can do to the sign graph. Have a lovely day. Bye.